Hello and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Wall and today we're going to learn about telling time to the half hour. For today's lesson, you will need a piece of paper and a pencil or a writing utensil or wait as you gather these materials. Today you will have an opportunity to practice your portrait of a graduate attributes as we discover time to the half hour together. You can show your math thinking through writing and through speaking throughout the lesson. Let's get our brains warmed up by looking at these two clocks. What is the same but different? One way these two pictures are the same is they both are analog clocks. They both have an hour hand, which is the short hand, and a minute hand, which is the long hand. They also both have the hour hand pointing within the two o'clock hour. Maybe you thought they were different because one clock is blue and one clock is red. Maybe you, you saw the blue clock has the minute hand pointing towards the 12, and the red clock has the minute hand pointing towards the 6. Previously, we've learned about what it means when the minute hand faces the 12, and today we're going to learn about what it means when the minute hand points toward the 6. Let's remind ourselves about an analog clock by using your paper and pencil and practicing to draw the clock. The first step is to draw a circle. Do you remember how many hours need to be on the clock? That's right, 12. To get the hours spaced nicely, I like to first draw the 12 mark and the 6 mark. Where is the 12 and the 6 on the clock? The 12 mark is at the top of the clock and the six mark is at the bottom of the clock. The next easy part is to draw the quarter marks on the clock, one on the right side and one on the left. Do you know what numbers should go there? This is where the three and the nine are on the clock. The last thing we can do is fill in the rest of the clock with the rest of the numbers. Let's take another look at this analog clock. Keep in mind that the short hand counts the hours and the long hand counts the minutes. What time is this clock showing and how do you know? You can practice using your communicator skills by sharing your ideas out loud to yourself or to someone nearby. If you need some help, you can use the sentence stem on the screen to help you. The time on the clock is, hmm, I know this because The time on the clock is two o'clock. I know this because the hour hand is pointing at the two and the minute hand is pointing at the 12, which means it is the beginning of the hour. Do you know how long it takes for the minute hand to go all the way around the clock? How long is an hour? It takes 60 minutes for the minute hand to go all the way around the clock. 
Think back to the clock that we drew this morning. Where would the minute hand point if it went halfway around the clock? Try writing or drawing on your clock that's on your paper to see if you can figure this out. If the minute hand were to go halfway around the clock, it would point at the six. If it takes 60 minutes to go all the way around, how many minutes do you think it would take to go halfway around the clock? Thirty minutes. Look again at this analog clock. The short hand counts the hours and the long hand counts the minutes. When the minute hand is pointing at the six, it is half past an hour. When the minute hand shows a half past, we can say this is half past the hour or blank 30. What do you notice about the hour hand when the minute hand is pointing at the six? The hour hand will be halfway between two hours. What time is on the clock and how do you know? Practice being a communicator by either writing your ideas or saying them out loud to yourself or to someone around you. The time on the clock is, uh, I know this because, uh. The time on the clock is 2.30 or half past two. I know this because the minute hand is pointing at the six and the hour hand is between the two and three. Let's also look at a digital clock. Look at this digital clock. How is this clock different from an analog clock? This clock is different because it doesn't have minute hands and hour hands. Keep in mind that the hour is on the left of the colon and the minutes are on the right of the colon. What do you know about the time on this clock? The 30 shows me the number of minutes. I know it is half past because 30 minutes is half of one hour. What time is the clock showing? You can write or share your ideas. The time on the clock is 7.30. We could also say half past seven. What two different ways can you say the time on these clocks? We could say the time as half past three, or we could say the time as 3.30. Let's play a game to practice our learning today. Let's play memory match. You might see a card that shows an analog clock, or maybe you will see a card that shows an o'clock time written in words and numbers, or maybe you will see a card that shows a digital clock. You will practice your memory skills and see if you can remember where the cards are and try to make a match between an analog clock, digital clock, or written form. For it to be a match, they must say the same time. Just like these three all show 6.30. Take a moment and get a good look at the cards. We're gonna cover the cards up and try to find some matches. Hmm, let's turn over two cards and see if they are a match. When we flip a card over, ask yourself, what time is shown on each clock? Practice saying the time out loud to yourself that is shown on each clock. This clock shows 4.30. 
Do you remember where the other 430 card was on the board? I think I remember. Yes, that's right. This digital clock also shows the time of 430. We found a match. Let's try to find some more matches. Let's turn over another card. What time is on the clock? This digital clock shows the time of nine o'clock. Let's see if we can find a match. What does this card say? Hmm, half past 12. We did not find a match. Let's keep trying. What does this card show? I see that this card has the minute hand on the 12 and the hour hand pointing to the nine. What time does this show? That's right, the time on this clock is nine o'clock. Didn't we see the other nine o'clock card? Do you remember where it is? Can you point to it? I think I remember. Yes, we made another match. We have two cards left. Let's check it to see if they are a match. This card says half past 12. What time is on this clock? I see the minute hand is pointing to the six and the hour hand is between the 12 and the one. What time is it? This time is 12.30. That is the same as half past 12. We made a match. That was a great game. Let's continue to practice by counting by the half hour. The time will appear on the screen as we go to help keep track. Let's start by counting, starting at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock, 2.30. Let's pause for a second. What time do you think will come next if we continue to count by half hours? You can practice being a communicator by either writing your answer or saying it out loud to yourself or someone who's nearby. Let's see, three o'clock. Let's keep counting, 3.30. Hmm, what time do you think it'll be when we reach this box? Let's find out by continuing our count. Four o'clock, 4.30, five o'clock, <gasps> 5.30, great job, let's keep going. Six o'clock, 6.30. Seven o'clock, 7.30. Do you remember another way we could say 7.30? That's right, we could say half past seven and that could mean the same thing as 7.30. What do you notice about the time as we go across the row? Remember rows go from left to right. See the big blue arrow up top? As we count by half hours, the hour stays the same, but the minutes add up by 30. What do you notice about the time on the clock as we go down the first row? As we add one hour from 12, we move to one o'clock. What about as we continue to go down the rows? As we go down the rows, we can see that the hour on the clock increases by one and the minutes do not change. How many half hours are in one hour? There are two half hours in every one hour, and each half hour is made up of 30 minutes. In today's lesson, we went over ways to tell time to the half hour. Mathematicians can communicate their ideas in many ways. Take a moment to think about yourself as a mathematician and a communicator. Were you able to write to share your thinking? 
Were you able to speak so others can understand you? Think about your learning that you had today. What is one thing that you learned? I learned. And what is one thing that you are still wondering? I wonder. Thank you for joining me today, first graders, in our episode of Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Wall, and I hope you have a mathematical day and keep on counting. See you soon.